teaches us that we cannot take anything for granted. Our freedom to practice Judaism, the existence of the state of Israel, and even our right to live. Today, we are joined by Dr. Judea Pearl, Daniel's, Daniel Pearl's father. Judea founded the Daniel Pearl Foundation to continue Daniel's life work of dialogue and understanding and to address the root causes of this tragedy. The Daniel Pearl Foundation sponsors journalism fellowships aimed at promoting honest reporting at East West and East West Understanding. And the foundation also organizes worldwide concerts to promote intercultural respect while sponsoring public dialogue between Jews and Muslims in order to explore common ground. The foundation is supported by Eli Wiesel, President Bill Clinton, Abdul Sattar Adi, and Queen Noor of Jordan. BBYO has also memorialized Daniel through the creation of Daniel Pearl BBG in Cotton State Station. <laughs> Dr. Pearl has also compiled a book titled, I Am Jewish, with the last words of Daniel Pearl. Daniel Pearl. Signed copies will be available during the show. Please join us in giving a proud welcome to Dr. Judea Pearl, as we honor the legacy of his son this morning and the lessons we've learned since then. I tell you how what a privilege it is for me to address the next generation of Israel, the future of our people. Thank you for having me. It was uh, nine years ago, yeah, in February of 2002, that the whole world was praying with us for the safe return of our son Daniel. We were absolutely sure that he will manage somehow to charm his abductor and go free. We could not imagine that any human being, however cruel, could harm such a gentle soul as Danny was. But we simply <coughs> were wrong. And reality had betrayed its own logic and its own facts. Uh, so, it was indeed in February of 2002, in an isolated dungeon in Karachi, Pakistan, that this young man that you see in front of you was facing his abductors and said, Are you crazy? I'm a journalist. Are you out of your mind? Yes, he was a journalist. A journalist who gave voice to millions of voiceless Muslims from Pakistan to the Balkans, from Eritrea to Yemen. They told us stories about <coughs> the people in Tehran trying to weave carpets, about <coughs> the singers in Bahrain, about the Yemenites and Eritreans fighting on who owns the real queen of Sheba. And as they stood there, demanding sanity in front of madness. You know, that dungeon in Karachi, Pakistan, turned into a microcosm of the 21st century and came to amplify and personify the age-old struggle between civilization and barbarity. And the struggle lasted for about a week. A week later, in that same dungeon, he was facing a video camera and he proclaimed his identity. My name is Daniel Pearl, he said. I'm a Jewish American reporter from Encino, California. My father is Jewish, my mother is Jewish, and I am Jewish. He did not say it under coercion, nor did he say it in defiance or gallantry. He said it in his usual matter-of-factish way, a bit irritated, as if saying, how many times do I have to repeat it? Two plus two makes four, and I am Jewish. 
It was not so naive as to ignore the venom on his captor's face each time he uttered the word Jewish. But still he continued, my father is Jewish, my mother is Jewish, and I am Jewish. Now what did he mean by those 11 words? Now he was not religious in the conventional sense. Yes, he fasted on Yom Kippur, and yes, he made sure he always celebrated the Seder. Even on that Trans-Siberian train, we have video from where he substituted the rice cookies instead of matzos, and, and called a group of enchanted Manchurian peasants to join him in celebrating the Exodus. But in essence, Judaism for him was the language of his extended family, a source of pride, commitment, and historical identity. When Daniel said, I'm Jewish, what he really meant was, I respect Islam precisely because I'm Jewish, and I expect you to respect me and my faith because you are or you claim to be good Muslims. You see, I come from a place where one's heritage is the source of one's strength. And one's strength is measured by one's capacity to accommodate diversity. Because it is only through diversity that we get to recognize our common humanity. I am Jewish means I must understand. In other words, I am possessed with this historically baked obsession to understand things and to understand things my way because my wandering ancestors, hardened by centuries of persecution and oppression, have taught me to mistrust all dogmas and all ideology and every, <clears throat> to question every authority and every conventional wisdom. So as a Jew, they left me with no other mental tranquilizer except that chronic urge to question and to understand. I understand suffering because I, my ancestors, <coughs> suffering of my ancestors is etched on my consciousness. And I understand justice because I was distilled in, in injustice and I understand Muslim suffering too because I've seen your people in Kosovo and I've worked with your carpet weaver in Tehran and I've sung with your pearl divers in Bahrain. I am Jewish means I am reminding you of the challenge of understanding others. So let's come to our senses. I am Jewish means I proclaim my right to be different and I remind you as did my ancestors for three millennia, of the shining dignity of being different. I am Jewish means I am the litmus test of your faith and the fire test of your strength. So let's come to our senses. But it was Daniel's next sentence, the very last one that he spoke freely, that shed the true light on what he meant by those words. And it goes like that. Back in the town of Bnei Brak in Israel, there is a street named after my great-grandfather, Chaim Kerl, who was one of the founders of the town. Now, why is he telling us this story about his great-grandfather and about Bnei Brak? in that frantic race for nanosecond. Why does his mind stumble on this anecdotal, almost forgotten story in our family lore? As you can imagine, I've asked myself this question millions of times in the past nine years. 